So the Fission website says building protocols for the future on the internet. What is the future? What future is the correct one? How do we know that it's correct? And where is that future? Yeah, great question. So I think we're a bit of a funny company. And we are ultimately one of the core things that we do right now. We're a protocol engineering team. So I talked to you about building this edge app stack of identity data compute on top of IPFS. We really think that content addressing is huge. Unlike location-based addressing, right now, if you run a server at example.com, no one else can help you host example.com. Let's say an actual file, example.com slash boris.jpg. No one else can help host that file. They could download it and they could put it on their own server myserver.com slash boris.jpg, but we don't know it's the same one. And in fact, it doesn't share between the two. And once you put content, whether it's an app or files or data or something that's encrypted onto content addressing, amazing, we can do all sorts of different interesting caching. So if you have a podcast that I really like, I can help keep it online. I know that that podcast hasn't been edited because it has a unique content address. And I can save it literally even just on my desktop or on my phone. And then when people around me are requesting it, I'm helping keep it online. That's this really nice commons network of IPFS. However, in practically leaning in and and trying to use IPFS for apps, for entire apps and for read write of IPFS and, and adding that, we found that the IPFS protocol itself still needed work. So we ended up getting sucked in and rather than just working on our dev tool stack, we kind of went on a multi-year journey of working with the extended IPFS and Filecoin ecosystems in improving the protocol itself. So that's kind of what we mean by that. And Brooklyn Zleika, my co-founder and, and CTO, um, she developed UCAN, which is decentralized auth protocol that's getting some really good adoption. Um, all of these things we end up developing as open standards. One of the downsides of IPFS was that everything was in public. So Brooke developed the web native file system, WinFS, which is a way for users, apps, and servers to have encrypted data on top of IPFS in a turnkey way. And so what is the future of the internet? I think part of it is having things more user-centric, having portable data, having something that's content address that means you could do everything from mobile to servers to embedded devices and everything else like that in a way that is a really interesting open way, including self-verifying data. And a lot of things need to be secured by cryptographic tokens and signing in different ways. So uh, killing the password. I think also today that user data has become a toxic asset. If you are running a service that has lots of user data, you can get hacked. And if you don't keep it encrypted, it can get stolen. So I think it's important for more and more data to be end-to-end encrypted and encrypted at rest. I sometimes joke and I say that if uh, Apple, if Apple's iCloud and their system in general was open source, then Fission wouldn't have to build what it's building, right? That kind of mode where instead of everything going through separate servers, You've got your own devices at the edge. You've got local computation doing things like machine learning and and other things like that and things being fully encrypted. And so what we want to do is both build protocols and that means standards. So it's not just us. It's not just a chunk of open source code. It's one level more important than open source code, which is the spec. So multiple people can implement it in multiple different programming languages and know that they have interoperable and then use those building blocks to build these more user-centric, more secure, more privacy-protecting applications and services. That's where we're heading. 